Hi, I'm the Rifter. Today I would like to show you some Android photography tips. This is just going to help you take your cell phone photography to the next level, which I was always in the mindset of, you've got all these good cameras, why would you bother using a cell phone when you can just turn something on auto? I mean, I don't usually use auto, but most of the time you can just turn it on auto. Most people aren't going to buy an expensive camera. Most people have a powerful solution right in their pocket, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But there are some things that people do not know about photography, number one, and the stock Android app. This will work for the majority of the phones out there, uh, just the tips that I give you, but I'm using an Android S10 Plus. So most of this stuff is going to be geared towards that, but most of these features are available on all phones. Just check your user manual or your specifications just to see if these features are offered on your phone. So the first thing is focus. Focus is the single most important aspect of a video or photo. If your focus is barely off, it can completely ruin a photo or a video. The best way to do that is to have your camera open, tap on the screen where somebody's eyes are, and have those in focus. You're taking pictures of a pet, which mine is lazy over there on the sofa, a child or a human being, make sure you get their eyes in focus. That is the biggest killer of any photo. Also, if your cell phone has it, enable anti-shake or uh, shake vibration reduction, whatever your phone actually calls the feature. Any shake on your hands, specifically in low light situations, they're just, you will notice it immediately. Now, while these not, may not be the best photos, they are at least the, well, the second one is in focus, but the first one, I mean, this was low light. It was just the Christmas tree and the fan lighting it, but they're not very strong bulbs. So the next thing you need, we need to go over is proper stance. You really need to have your feet about shoulder width apart and one slightly in front of the other one. I'm kind of, I usually take off with my left foot, so my left foot is usually forward. You want to have your phone like this. Keep your elbows in. Don't keep them in where you're shaking because that's just, it's going to shake your phone around. But what you want to do is bring your elbows in just close to your body and take your photo. Now the other thing is you've got an on-screen shutter button usually. Don't use that. Look in your settings and what you're going to do is you're going to turn on the ability to take your photos with your volume buttons. That is the best possible thing you can do because if you take your phone, you take your hand off your phone or you try to use your finger to press that button you're just shaking the phone like this so press on your volume button the next tip if you're photographing an animal or a person or pet which is an animal but still get down on their level don't take a picture from up here down now there, there's an exception to the rule if you take a photo from up here down if you find a good angle and it just looks good, go for it. There's no rule about it. But if you get down on their level, like eye level with them, that is gonna have your best photo possible. Now for self-portraits, there's a setting on most Android phones now for voice activation. So let's say you've got your phone out like this and you're trying to take a selfie or whatever, or you have it set across the room, you can literally say smile, photo, picture, or record. If you say record, it's gonna start recording video. If you say the other three phrases, or cheese even, it will take a photo of you, but it'll have this little circle that appears, at least on my phone it's a circle. It goes around the lenses, but it, uh, it will actually take a photo after about 
three, four seconds. But that's one way to keep shake out of your photo. It's also a good way not to have another person present taking photos. We are currently decorating for Christmas. Excuse the mess, but <laughs> this is my setup at the, at the moment. You'll notice I have grid lines on my phone. Turn the grid lines on when you're taking photos. It will let you line up items with these lines and it'll let you use the rule of thirds. You don't want your subject always in the center of your photo or if you're taking a landscape, it'll help you line up this pole with that tree or even the horizon line. Uh, it, it just looks a lot nicer when you take photos with the rule of thirds. And if you don't know what the rule of thirds is, just look it up. There's a lot of information on it and a lot of different ways to use it, which I would rather make an entire video about that. So if you're photographing children or family members and you have one of those families that they don't, they just don't want to cooperate, you know, hey, smile. And then somebody's looking over there at something and the kid's looking at his feet laughing. This is probably going to be the best possible um, solution for you. And I use it all the time when I'm taking photos of family with cell phones. There is a multi-burst function or a multi-shot function that you can use will save your life sometimes. The Galaxy S10 Plus, let me get back to my camera, I'm going to switch this to selfie mode, my god. So if you, there we go, so I'm going to use my shutter button, but you can also use your button there your shutter button on the screen, but I'm gonna press this and hold it down. Now you may have to enable this in your uh, settings. See the little number? So over the course of 10 to 15 seconds, you are going to get uh, burst shots. And what it does, what this does is it lets you pick the best photo which I know all these are the same, but it took 100 photos over the course of 10 or 15 seconds. Very helpful when dealing with people where one person is blinked, the other person's not smiling. You're bound to get a good photo in those 10 to 15 seconds where everyone's smiling or paying attention. If at all possible, refrain from using your zoom on your cell phone. And unless you have multiple cameras, mine has five cameras on it, Come on, see those three lenses there? So one is a wide angle, one standard, and then one is a telephoto, which I say telephoto wide and standard for smartphones it is. There's also two more on the front, one's a wide and then one's a normal selfie. Uh, I would switch to the wide one because my arms are short and stubby and I don't have a selfie stick on me half the time because I don't really like them. If you do need to use your zoom, Specifically, if you don't have multiple lenses on your phone, try to use it sparingly. Like if you have to zoom in a little, that's fine. But if you have to zoom all the way in and you're trying to take a photo of a bird that's way, way out there, just take a normal photo and then zoom into it. Don't zoom in, then take a photo. All you're doing is taking less pixels and then you are throwing a grid over it and upscaling it. So if your phone does, I'm just, um, if your phone does 1080 by 1920 and you, that's a normal photo, which I know it's not, but I'm just saying pixel wise, if you zoom in, then take a photo, you're zooming down to like 640 by 480 then when you take that photo, it's throwing another grid on top of it and making it 1920 by 1080, which is terrible. It, it, it's just, it severely reduces the quality. Just don't do that. Now, I don't have a piece of tracing paper, but I have used it before. If you have to use your flash on your phone, and I know most people aren't going to have it uh, on them, but if you have a piece of tracing paper or like onion skin paper, and you have a way to tape it without putting tape over your flash, 
do it. It will severely soften the light. For editing photos, if you do not have a computer and you don't want a subscription plan to Adobe Photoshop or Lightroom, download Lightroom on Android. It's completely free, except for if you want to go into some of the more advanced features, which if I need to do that, I'll just, which if I need to do that, I'll just take it on my computer and I'll edit it there. But I'm not gonna pay a subscription plan for something I don't use all the time. Most of the features on Adobe Lightroom are free on your phone. Now, the biggest tip I can give you is, especially if you're taking video, I'm going to tell you how to properly film video in portrait mode. You know, you see all these people doing this and it just looks terrible when you watch the video later on because no one likes portrait mode. At least I, I hate watching video in portrait mode because your monitors aren't turned like this. So specifically, this is how you do it. Don't film in portrait mode. Stop doing that. I can't stress that enough. It looks terrible. No one wants to watch it. The only way you're going to, the only way somebody's going to want to watch that is on your phone. And sometimes you want to send the video to somebody. And I understand we watch most of our videos on our phones, but it just looks terrible. Don't film in portrait mode. Always film in landscape. And if you don't understand what that is, don't hold your phone like this. Hold it like this. I was pretty sure I made that clear a second ago, but you never know. So anyway, I'm the Rifter. If you like this video, please click like. It lets me know I'm doing something right. Uh, subscribe, share to your friends. If you hate it, share it with your enemies. Maybe they'll subscribe and like it. Uh, but again, I'm the Rifter. Thank you for watching. 147 subscribers, thank you. Bye. Say yes. No. And it, it will kind of reduce those harsh shadows that you see behind people in like, I'm sure you've seen the essential bar photo that you take of your friends and it's just like, oh, I wish that was a better photo. It just looks terrible in the background. But I mean, that may be the effect you want, you know. If you want to get a picture of your friend barfing and then like the harsh shadow on the wall with the puke, that's fine. Dude, go for it.